G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's video we're going to be talking about avoiding nutrient deficiencies in your brand new aquaponic systems once they're planted out. Now even though you may have cycled the system, we're still going to need to keep in mind that you're most likely going to be adding very small young fish once the system is cycled. Now these fingerlings will not be consuming a large amount of feed, therefore not providing a lot of nitrate and other nutrients for the plants to take up. Now unfortunately I see many folks start to cycle their system and fully plan out all the beds with a load of tomatoes, greens of various varieties, herbs, capsicum, sweet peppers, and they just don't perform very well at all. Now the truth is there just is not going to be enough nutrition in the small amount of fish feed your fingerlings require to be able to sustain a fully planted out aquaponic system. So what we're going to need to do is work out how many plants our system can sustain on the small amount of feed we'll be giving our newly added fingerlings or young fish. Now just a quick heads up on the feed calculations for commercial aquaponic systems. They're a lot more in depth as they have to run a tighter ship all round. They need to run their systems as efficiently as possible, allowing them to run as profitably as possible or they just wouldn't be able to stay in operation. We're dealing with backyard aquaponics systems here, so a lot of the figures I'll be using will be generalizations. Now to kick us off, we'll look at an example of the amount of feed consumed by 25 fingerlings that weigh approximately five grams each. And I will be working in grams as a unit of measurement, but as fish feed rates are calculated by percentage of weight, you folks in the United States should be able to get the basic idea. In this example, we'll say a five gram fish generally consumes around about 2% of its body weight twice a day. And the easiest way to work out the total amount of feed needed to be given to our 25 fish is to find out the total biomass, biomass being the total weight of the fish in the fish tank, and then work out the 2% from there. Now 25 fish at five grams each give us a total biomass of 125 grams in the fish tank. 2% of 125 grams is 2.5 grams. Now as we're feeding the fish twice a day, that gives us a whopping total of five grams of fish feed per day that will be ultimately passing through the fish and become food for the plants in the grow beds. Commercial growers need to watch every penny. That's why they tend to feed to a percentage of the body weight for the fish. And to tell you the truth, it does come in handy just to give you guys a visual idea on how little feed these fingerlings will take when they're first starting out. Now, a better way to feed for us backyarders is called the satiation method. Now, in this method, what we do is we take a given weight of feed, slowly add it into the fish tank until the fish will eat no more, and then, weigh the remaining feed again, subtract that from the original amount, and that will give us a rough idea on how much we need to give the fish at every feeding event. Now I think it's a good idea to do this over a two or three day period and then work out the average. And then every, say every four to six weeks, do another three day feed regime like this, slowly adding in a little bit at a time, just to work out if their appetite has increased to match their actual growth rate. So I thought I'd add this in here because it's a lot easier than pulling out five to 10 fish at a time, working out an average body weight and yeah, working out your percentages from there. A lot less stressful on the fish as well. Just a quick heads up for you folks who may be new to aquaponics or maybe this is the first time you've seen it and would like to know more. I do have a backyard aquaponics beginner's guide available. It is an online guide, 1995 US, and it covers everything from what is aquaponics all the way through to how to start your own system, including how to build a small one using recycled components and some basic plumbing bits and pieces. And then it carries on into managing the system, uh, how to look after your plants, suggestions for plants when you first start off and that sort of thing. So do check it out. There is a link down below. So that's enough of me spruiking my wares. Now back to the video. As to the amount of fish feed that needs to enter the system so the plants can grow nice and healthy, varies depending on which source you look up online. It's generally calculated as X amount of feed at a particular percentage weight of protein per X amount of surface area the plants are grown in. Now the feed most of us use to feed our fish in our backyard aquaponic systems run protein wise around about 30 to 45%, which you know for our purposes is within the ranges I've seen quoted on commercial sites when it comes to feed to plant area ratios. Now for my own system, I like to use roughly around about 20 to 50 grams of fish feed per one square meter or nine square feet of grow bed space for basically for greens and herbs as they have relatively low nutrient requirements. 
Now when it comes to my fruiting plants, I prefer the feed rate to be over 50 grams per square meter or nine square feet, just because those plants do tend to be a little bit more nutrient demanding. I mean, it's not just leafy greens, they're actually putting on fruit for us to pick as well. Now back to our measly little five grams of fish feed for the fingerlings. As you can see, it's not going to support a lot of plants when we first start out. Now, depending on how we've cycled the system, we may have a bit of a nutrient bank of nitrogen in there, as well as other elements. If you've been adding in kelp or the seaweed additive, or you use something like the Charlie Carp fish emulsion. By all means, put those seedlings in there as soon as you start to cycle, because in no time flat, the nitrates will turn up and the plants will be able to use them. Now, I would caution you at this point against adding any extra fish emulsion or ammonia sources in there to boost the nitrogen level in your system after you've added the fish, as high nitrate levels can impact the health of some fish species while they're very young. One thing you can keep adding to keep the plants healthy is the kelp or seaweed additive, as it has very little, if any, ammonia or nitrogen, and it is going to help provide some extra potassium. It's fairly high in potassium as well as other micro elements that may not be in abundance in the waste provided by the fish after they assimilate the food. As the fish do put on more size, they will require more feed naturally, and you're going to see this reflected in the nitrate test results. As the levels rise, you can start adding in more plants to the grow beds. I hope that helps you get your head around the nutrient cycle when you first start off an aquaponic system and just how much is actually in there um, for when you plant out. Now on to what are the best plants to actually stick in the grow beds once you start cycling the system. As we've already seen, there's not going to be a great deal of nitrate or other elements floating around the system for the plants to consume. So what I'd recommend is you start out with five to 10 small leafy greens or small herb plants to begin with, as these plants have relatively low nutrient requirements. You can then monitor the nitrate levels regularly with the test kit that you use to cycle your system, and you can add in new plants as you find the nitrates start to climb. Now my pick of plants with a low nutrient requirement to get you started, and they also suit a wide selection of growing zones around the world, would be leafy greens and herbs as I mentioned just before. Plants such as Asian greens like bok choy or pak choy, lettuces of all varieties with the cut and come again and the loose leaf being our favorite along with the cos, we don't mind the cos, and they're also known as remain by you folks over in the States. Uh, radishes and beets or beetroot, celery, chard, which is also known as silver beet here in Australia and fennel. As for the herbs, you know, there's loads of herbs chives, you've got your parsley, your sage, green onions, basil, thyme, oregano. They're also great selections when you're just starting off. Now there are a few other low nutrient demanding plants that you could try, but they can become a rather invasive. Uh, the two off the top of my head are mint and watercress. I definitely would suggest you grow these plants in their own self-contained grow beds that are easily maintained. So when they start to take off, you can prune them out, pull some of the plants off, and they don't overtake the whole system. You'll thank me later, believe me. So even though that I've just listed off a whole heap of different plants that you could start your aquaponic system with, remember that it's probably best only to start off with five to 10 to begin with, and then you can pretty much will add new plants in as you start to see that nitrate um, start to rise in your tests. I do hope that this video has helped you folks out who are new to aquaponics. I do hope that you are all well and happy and your own gardens and aquaponic systems are booming. Cheers folks and happy growing.